Okay, hi, this is Steve from Ultraceps Color Separation Software. And um, every so often I'm asked, what's the best way to apply a texture or a pattern or some type of like, you know, vintage type uh, distressed effect uh, to an image for color separation? And there are some people who, um, well, let's say most people will apply that texture or uh, distress effect to the image and then color separate it. But that's not always the best way to do it. In fact, it could be one of the worst ways to do it. And um, I'm going to show you uh, an alternative method to apply a texture to a completed color separation uh, within Photoshop that uh, is somewhat more accurate than running a separation on an image that already contains this type of effect. Now, here we have a relatively simple uh, six color separation. There's a white under base, a yellow, a blue, red, a highlight white, and a black. Okay. Now, we have to find out the size, the actual physical size of this separation, both the resolution and um, the, the uh, physical dimensions. So let's go to image, image size, and you can see it's about 10 by 12 and around 210 dpi. Okay. Click cancel. Now we need to open up the texture or image file that you want to apply to this separation. Now I already have one open called Nasty Scratches, uh, which is included with our 125 uh, vintage texture set. Now once you have your texture open, you're going to have to check and more than likely change the image size of the texture to more closely match the separation. Now the key here is it doesn't have to be exact. So let's go to image, image size, and now you see this is 8 by 10 at 300 dpi. Uh, and the other image I believe was 10 by 12 at 200. Uh, so we, the 8 by 10 is fine. This could be stretched a little bit. So, But let's just bring the resolution down. Let's bring it down to like 215. Click OK. Okay. Now once that is done, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this image, we're going to drag our texture image into the separation. Now to do this, we need to get our uh, drag tool, our move tool. Uh, it's in the upper left hand corner of Photoshop, it's right here. And now we're going to click on our texture, hold down our shift key, and we're going to drag that into our separation. Now we'll move that out of the way. Now we go to the separation, you'll see this has added another layer called layer 1. Okay, we'll turn off the colors in the separation. And here you see you have your, your texture within the image. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to scale this to fill the window completely. So, as I said, turn off your separation. Make sure that layer is active that contains the uh, texture. Now let's go up to um, image. I'm sorry. Let's go up to Edit, uh, Transform, and Scale. And we're going to drag the little sliders to fill the canvas area with this texture. Once you have it filled, click the Enter key to apply that. Once complete, it's probably best to pick out the red channel of the RGB and duplicate that. And it will be named Red Copy. It really doesn't matter what it's called. At this point, you could take this layer back here that uh, contains the texture and delete it. Because all the information that we need, oh, we have to turn your RGB on, all the information we need is contained within this alpha channel. Now, how are we going to apply this alpha channel uh, to the separation? Well, it's pretty simple. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on that red copied channel that contains the information and we're going to control click it. On a Mac it would be command click. Once What, what that's doing now is it's loading the data within this uh, texture channel as a selection. After it's loaded, you'll have to go up to choose select and inverse. We're doing that because we only want to select the dark areas. Um, you know, the actual areas within this textured alpha channel that contains data. Now, once that's, that, once that's loaded, 
you would shift click on each one of the channels in your selection in your uh, color separation I'm sorry uh, once you do that it's a good idea to make sure your foreground color is black and your background color is white and now you can hit your delete key or control X or command X to cut now here we're just going to use the cut technique okay and as you can see here that uh, did a great job of removing all of that texture data from your separation but we didn't remove it from the white underbase now this is the big advantage in doing it this way the reason why we didn't remove the texture data from the white underbase at least yet is because if we did remove the exact amount of data from the white underbase more than likely on press um, you would wind up with seeing a lot of white creeping into the areas of where ink has been knocked out you know this is due to the fact you have a lot of little tiny lines little specks so we need to make that a little heavier before applying it to the white underbase so how are we going to do that well let's simply click our red copy channel again which contains our texture okay and let's go up to uh, image adjustments now you could use curves or levels and I'm going to use curves and I'm going to essentially make this texture darker and I'll bring it up and as you can see here that made a big effect it actually made it more dense and it added width to the lines and width to the little specks if I turn preview on and off you can you can definitely see the difference if needed you could go a little higher now, depending upon how your curves box is set up, um, if your gradient is going from uh, dark to light, you would move your uh, you would move your handle down. Uh, I usually recommend working light to dark, okay, which is pigment ink combination, as you can see here is checked. Now we'll click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load this red copy that's been darkened as a selection again. So control click or command click on Mac we're going to go select inverse but this time we're only going to choose the white underbase and we're gonna cut and now a slightly bit more of data has been removed from the white underbase as compared to the other channels now look at this area down here mostly now if I choose black you'll see that there's much less data removed from the black in these areas down here as compared to the white so now when we turn all of our color channels on again including the shirt background and we'll zoom in a little bit you're not getting any of that white ink creeping into the design itself and this should print perfect now I have another little tip on how to make adjustments to the edges of color separations after all of the separation is done and completed and I'll get to that in my next video I hope this has been very helpful to you and uh, I'll see you next time thanks again